Hi, Molina. Welcome to the show. Hi, John. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Now, you uh, have written one book about your experiences. Uh, your parents were Haitian, I understand, and you live in New York. So why don't you first tell us a little bit about yourself, your background? Okay. Uh, my name is Molina Jean-Louis or Molina Jean Lewis. I'm fine with either pronunciation of my last name. I was born and raised in New York. Both my parents were born and raised in Haiti, came to New York in the 70s, decided to have children here, <laughs> though they had met in um, Haiti, but they decided to wait till they came here to start having a, you know, an official um, family. Um, by profession, I'm a physical therapist. I've been practicing, the years go by so fast, so I've been practicing since 2005, so I'd say about uh, 19 years if I'm doing the math, or 18 years. And the last couple of years, I've been kind of shifting and focusing more on getting to know my culture. Um, since I, I call myself, I guess, a second generation, but first generation born here, a lot of my focus has been getting to know Haiti, getting to know more about my Haitian culture. So that's what led to the book. Okay. And what is the name of your book? The name of my book is called The Postal Codes for the Ten Departments of Haiti. Okay. Well, let's hear all about that. What the genesis of the book was basically to get to know all the towns that are um, in Haiti. Um, basically, all I know is the two towns that my parents are from, the name of the capital, Port-au-Prince, and some of like the more famous towns like Jacmel, cap Haitien, but anything else I realized I didn't know. So if I was hearing any news about Haiti, I couldn't conceptualize whether it was happening in the north, west, east of Haiti. So I started putting together all 10 departments of Haiti and pinpointing where all the towns are, their names. Then I realized that each town has a French version and spelling of the name and a Haitian Creole version spelling of the name. So the map started off with just the 10 departments within their French names and then um, evolved into a, set, a second set of maps of the, the, the towns in Haiti based on their Haitian Creole names. Okay. And what kind of research did you do to write this book? Oddly enough, I was in a WhatsApp group <laughs> and somebody just dropped all the postal codes for Haiti. And that was another concept that should not have been foreign to me, but every country has postal codes. Um, it just never dawned on me that, you know, the towns in Haiti also have postal codes because most times if you're mailing something to Haiti, it's usually a description. So it's usually um, I'll give you an example. You're mailing it to the person who lives right next to a red building. So it's more descriptive, not really the full address. So then that's what set me on the search to then start looking up the towns associated with the postal codes. So it was a lot of um, internet research and people that I knew in Haiti that I was kind of reaching out to, you know, does this look okay? Is this the correct spelling? I'm seeing it online, but you can't trust everything that you Google. So I was able to ask some people who are living there as well to kind of help me. Mm -hmm. Now in the news, Haiti appears once in a while and here in the in the West, we, we generally hear bad things happening in Haiti. Do you cover Correct. some of the uh, unfortunate situations that go on down there? I don't. Um, it's it's not my genre. I guess my brand is called Haitianish. So it's kind of a play on a TV show that was pretty popular here in the U.S. called Blackish, but I put um, Haitianish. So you can get the you know, I'm of Haitian descent, but <laughs> if I speak Haitian Creole, you'll be able to tell that it's not my first language. So the point of my brand is to showcase the other aspect that does not get shown because the, the, the negative aspects are out there. You can definitely find out all the information there. The news um, definitely supplies enough information that if somebody wanted to know those aspects, it's there. So the point of my brand is to show what's not shown. So Haiti, you're showing off as... A, a nice place. I'm sure that it has some good qualities to it. Is that what you're trying to promote? Yes. Um, I wouldn't tell somebody to travel now. Um, I'm not going to, you know, paint a picturesque picture that things are perfect. So I wouldn't say travel now, but I do highlight different aspects of Haitian culture and of Haiti through my brand. Um, just so people can see that we do have nice beaches. We do have um, great food. Or at least my opinion. <laughs> I would imagine you would, sure, yeah. Um, different aspects of our music. Um, so I try to highlight some of the positives. Right. Now, a lot of people go to the Dominican Republic for a vacation, and that's on basically the same island. 
So yeah, yeah. It's, it's it always seemed uh, strange to me that you know one side is okay and you can go on vacation there, and the other side you best stay away from. I mean, I'm glad that you're writing a book to you know show off the good parts of Haiti. Do you have any hope for the future that perhaps you and other people writing good things about Haiti and eventually maybe we could all go in there and travel? The answer is yes. So um, starting 2016, as an adult, I started traveling to Haiti. So what led me on this journey is there were seeds constantly being planted when I was younger. So when I was about age 10, we traveled to Haiti with my parents. And it's a typical thing. You stay with family. You don't really get to see um, like hotels. But my dad had a cousin that was very intentional. So he made sure to round us up for us to see some of the nice hotels. He paid for a day trip for us to go to a hotel that had beach, all you can eat, um, showing us other aspects that always kind of stood in my mind. So one of the hotels he took us to, which they call Moulin Sumer, um, he made sure to take us to another fancy French restaurant that was there, um, El Rancho. So those memories of some of the things that is often not shown have kind of stayed with me. He kind of planted those seeds that, you know, you know, so when I'm watching, when I was watching the news as I was growing up here in America, I do remember those fond memories of some of the areas that don't get highlighted because of, you know, various political instability. So it's been through my blogging that I've been able to showcase certain things that, um, you know, businesses, entrepreneurs that are there. Uh, I have a travel person that is also on my blog, another person that highlights my mom's hometown, which is a pretty niche hometown. Most people don't know about it. I was able to showcase that person. So mm -hmm. it's been, I guess, me trying to show that. I So since 2016, I have traveled every year until 2020. So each time I did travel, 2016, 2017, um, 2018, 2019, I didn't because of political instability, but 2019 seems like light political instability compared to um, currently, mm -hmm. and then 2020. So each time I went, I made sure to take photos or videos and kind of post that as well. Oh, that's cool. Do you have photos in your book? So no, I do not. So in so that maybe that's an idea for another book. This book is more of a reference. So it's the, all 10 maps in their French spelling and the 10 maps in their Haitian Creole spelling. So it's for somebody um, similar to me that's trying to get to know the country or somebody that might potentially be traveling or if you're hearing news in Haiti to kind of pinpoint where it is. Because sometimes you're hearing if there's an earthquake, you want to know if this is the area that's really impacted. Um, so it's a quick reference guide where somebody would be able to look up the name of a town and be able to picture where it is. Okay. So would this be a benefit to people of Haitian descent that live that, uh, living as a diaspora uh, abroad? So that, that, yeah, yeah. So somebody like me who's first generation and um, more, so second or third generation, that's kind of getting reacclimated and kind of want to know where things are. If all they know is just their parents' hometown and not other areas of Haiti. They'd be able to quickly look it up. Well, that's pretty cool. So, uh, how many pages is your book? That's a good question. I believe it's 62. 62. So it's a small book. It's a, like you said, a reference book. Basically, yeah. Yeah. It's got a glossary of all the towns um, in both languages where somebody would be able to look it up and go to that page. And then the e version of the book is clickable. So if you click one area of the map and then you want to go back to the main area, you can click that section. So it's not, you know, kind of flipping back and forth virtual. It's made very easy so that you can go back to each various maps. Mm -hmm. Now, I've been to New Orleans a few times, and the word Creole is used there quite a bit. What's the difference between the Creole that I'm familiar with and Haitian Creole? It's funny you should say that because I just got back from New Orleans. I was there um, this past weekend and just got back last night, um, went there for a conference. So hadn't been there since 2004. So it looked um, a lot of changes because I last time I was there was pre-Katrina. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, Haitian Creole and the Creole that's spoken in New Orleans, there is dialect differences. So Haiti's not the only country that speaks a Creole. Um, St. Lucia has a version, uh, Martinique, um, Dominica. So there are a couple of places that speak Creole. I just think that a lot of people are either familiar with New Orleans or Haiti, but there are other countries that speak Creole. Okay, Creole, is that a, 
Is that a pigeon, a French? It's a mix of French, African. I've heard it does have some Spanish um, in it a little bit, but it's mostly a, a mix of French and African dialect, especially from West Africa. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, we hear about uh, some of the religious practices. I know this is a reference book, but I may as well ask you. Um, yeah. What's What's that all about? Uh, when we hear voodoo, and I don't know much about that, um, and that's a sort of offshoot of Christianity. Do you have any knowledge of that? So it's not my area of expertise. So I just want to put that um, disclaimer out there. Um, from what I understand, it's a carryover from West African religion. And since um, the slaves at the time were not allowed to practice, um, you know, their religious practices or speak their language, they wove um, voodoo practices into Christianity. So that way, outwardly, you look like you're practicing Christianity, but you're really um, practicing um, the voodoo faith. Mm -hmm. So it's been so intermarried. That's why it appears that it's interwoven into Christianity. It was the only way that they could safely practice from what I understand. Sure. When you were growing up, your parents told you a lot of stories about the old country? Um, so, yes, uh, my dad more so than my mom. So it's because of my dad why I'm on this journey. Uh, despite everything, every year until, until 2020, my dad travels to Haiti every year. Um, so he'll come back with stories, but it's more of his actions speaking louder than words of traveling every single year to his hometown and to the capital as to what has sparked my interest to want to um, get connected and to travel there as well. So, yeah, but my dad always has some type of story about um, growing up in Haiti during those great. times. I like parents telling yeah. stories. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up that way, too. How about your relatives? What kind of relatives have you got over there? Uh, so both parents, I'm lucky to still have both of them. <laughs> um, a brother and sister. I have a lot of extended family. So aunts from my mom's side that are here. I still have um, an aunt um, and uncles that are in Haiti as well. But um, some of the stereotypical areas that you think of, I have family in New York, um, Canada, Florida, um, Georgia, which you'd be surprised that there is a population um, of Haitian people in Atlanta, uh, Connecticut. So some of the areas that you would think <laughs> and Boston, I cannot leave out Boston. Oh, well. <laughs> oh <that's cool. laughs> But it's funny. I uh, so I grew up in a neighborhood that's not very Haitian. So um, I, I grew up in New York City, but in Manhattan, um, most Haitians, when you think of Haitians, live um, Brooklyn, Queens, um, some parts of Long Island and um, Westchester. So I grew up in a neighborhood that was not very Haitian. I could probably count in half a hand of um, how many Haitian people. <laughs> so this quest that I've been on has been very intentional. Yeah, sounds it. Sounds it. Talk to me about the food. I love cooking. I like spicy food. What's Haitian food like? Haitian food can be very spicy. <laughs> <laughs> the spice that's often used is called piklis. So it's like um, uh, uh, kind of like I, I, some people would say I'm wrong to say it this way, but like a spicy coleslaw, but it's not coleslaw. And it, uh, probably some people feel disrespected that I called it a spicy coleslaw, but it's the best way that I can kind of um, describe it. Um, it depends on which region you're from, like from the north. They're very famous for a dish that has chicken and cashews in it. Um, we've got seafood. We've got okra. So our version, since you mentioned New Orleans, we've got our version of gumbo called kalaloo, um, uh, fried pork. <laughs> fried pork. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, chicken. Uh, uh, our most famous dish also is called diri jon jon. So it's a rice that looks black because of the black mushroom that they use to cook it. Um, diri jon jon. I'm not sure I should have asked you that question because I haven't <laughs> had dinner yet. Now you're making me so hungry. <laughs> so um, when, did, when did you write this book? So it's been, I'd say, off the course of two years. So initially it was just 
putting the maps together. So I'd put a map together, put it on social media, see that I was getting a reaction where people were either asking, can you tell me where a town was? Or, oh, this is really great, resharing. And so slowly putting the maps together and then formally put together, let me look at the year actually. It came out last year. So, to, oh, sorry, 2021. Okay. So formally put out on 2021. All right. You keep mentioning maps. Are there actual maps in the book? Yeah. So I didn't know whether to bring it on screen, but yeah, there are actual um, maps. So the first page shows you oh, both yeah. maps. Did um, you draw that? Picture, um, I had a graphic designer help me do this oh, okay. and I've placed his name in the back of the book. So you can also see who's the person that helped oh, me put yeah. the maps together. So it's, it's just, a, yeah. A fairly large book. I mean, you know, size wise, you know, Oh, look at that. That is so cool. So, I'll, so it's a quick reference. Yeah. And I'll go to the page that has the glossary so that you can kind of um, see. So if anybody hears a name of a town, all they have to do is look it up and they'd be able to find the page. So it's more of a, a reference guide when you're trying to kind of get to know. Because most people that are similar to me that are part of the diaspora that don't have a lot of interaction with Haiti or starting to get an interaction with Haiti. They only know the capital, um, Jacques Mel, Cap Aysia, and then the towns that their family are from. And then beyond that, um, they can't conceptualize other areas. Okay. So I started to realize there were other people in the same boat as me that would be interested in kind of knowing where's what. Yeah. And people who are Haitian background, but born outside Haiti, so yeah. would this be a book that if you're planning a trip to Haiti, this is a good book to take with you? Yes. So that you can kind of know um, where things are. Okay. All right. Well, sounds really good. And how are sales for you? I'm just starting on the process of putting myself out there. <laughs> and it's such a, um, the book is such a niche within a niche kind of, so it's like specific. So I'm just kind of like in the beginning, I've had a few sales, um, you know, I'm just, just starting out. <laughs> well, there must be like a Haitian um, community in New York, or as you said, you know, Atlanta. So are you a member of any Haitian community um, associations within the United States? Yes, I am. I'm part of an organization that's called the National Alliance for the Advancement of Haitian Professionals, or NAP. It's a nonprofit organization whose key goals is to connect Haitians from various um, job sectors. The organization started about maybe 11 years ago, and their goal was they were first generation Haitians that were going to a community college in New Jersey. And the goal was for them to connect and to meet other Haitians because um, in the U.S., uh, a degree is great, but also it's about who you know and the connections that you can make. So they host an annual conference where you can meet Haitians that are in various um, sectors. So people have met their future business partner, people have uh, met a future employer, or thought of a business idea that they never thought of before, or just they meet Haitians that are not in the stereotypical fields. I am in one of the stereotypical fields. I'm in healthcare, but um, a lot of people feel inspired that they meet Haitians that are in areas that you wouldn't think um, career-wise. I see. I see. Any uh, idea for a second book of, of a different field? Yeah. Well, um, yes. Uh, two separate um, directions. Because I'm actually naturally wasn't a writer. My sister's a writer. Um, so as I was putting this book together, when I just had the maps in one language, and then I realized I should have the maps in two languages. And then I realized that, um, that like in most places, each region has their own flag. So New York has a flag, South Carolina has a flag. So same concept. I was like, oh, do I need to put that in the book? So there'll be future versions of the book of things that every time I thought it was done and I wanted to add more. And my sister was like, you could just do versions. You could just do a version two or, you know, a second edition. But my, my other idea is um, more in the physical therapy realm. I've started doing something similar where I'm creating content, uh, anatomy content. So like um, uh, muscles of the face, uh, English, Haitian Creole and French. So same thing, I've been posting them online. So doing human anatomy, but having the human anatomy in English, Haitian Creole and their French spelling. I think it's easy to find French spelling, but not as easy to find human anatomy in Haitian Creole. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of been in direction I've been going as well. Okay. But that'll be another labor of love because that's a lot of work. <laughs> it sounds it. Yeah, but eventually. Really specialized stuff. 
No, you're on my podcast. Have you been on other podcasts as well? Yes. So um, I've been on two other podcasts. One just uh, premiered uh, today. And the other one um, is called Relative uh, Relatable Voice with Lucia, Lucia Monato. Uh, Sorry, I, know if I'm, I don't know That's if I'm okay. saying her name correctly. She's um, Brazilian and she interviews um, authors as well. So that was fun because she's also a physical therapist and an author. So that was, I was like, ooh. <laughs> um, and then and let me quickly give you the name of the other podcast. Um, but you are the third podcast and you're the first one where I'm on camera. So I'm still getting used to, um, you know, uh, doing these type of uh, interviews. Yeah. Uh, it's called Haitian American Diaries. So I just, it's two sisters that talk about their journey within Haitian culture as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Most podcasters are uh, kind of specific in what they do, right? Yeah. 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 So um, very niche, but all three um, well, actually, two were related to books. The Haitian American Diaries wasn't necessarily related to books, um, but resonated with that, obviously, for cultural reasons. But the other one um, is about um, authors. Okay, excellent. I'll interview uh, any author. Um, there's only two subjects that I can think of that I wouldn't uh, accept. Hate is one of them. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> and disinformation. We have plenty of that, so I'm not interested in that. <laughs> any other subject is fine by me. Well, the, so then that answers the other question you had stated before. Um, the negative aspects that I am not denying is true about Haiti is definitely, um, you can find it. So my goal is to highlight the stuff that's not highlighted. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you. Well, I wish you all the success. You uh, seem very buoyant and happy and you're having a fun time Thank doing you. this, I can tell. Yes, yes. I'm trying to transition. I love physical therapy. I've been doing it for such a long time, but I feel this is more of my calling. It's just figuring out, you know. But your proud to... parents are proud of you. Um, well, yes, but my dad never says it to my face. I hear <laughs> <laughs> Haitian parents can be very strict. So I hear from other people the positive stuff that he says, but oh, he doesn't necessarily sure. always proud tell of you for sure. <laughs> You're a delightful person. I really enjoyed having you on this show. And I hope uh, this podcast me. helps you in helping you promote your uh, work. Well, just thank you for the opportunity to speak about the book. That's oh. basically what I'm looking for, just the opportunity to discuss the book. And I'm very grateful you allowed me to be on your platform to do oh, so. You're welcome. Tell me about your book. And that's what it's really about. <laughs> <laughs> Molina, you have yourself a wonderful time, wonderful day. And I wish you well in the future. You too. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. And that's our show for today. If you like what I do here on Tell Me About Your Book, then please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell for future notifications. And if you are a self-published author, I would really like to speak with you. Until such time, keep on writing and be kind to one another.